Welcome back to the Payne's Creek Killings. Let's grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or something and start doing some detectiving. Detectivery. I found the murder weapon. I do apologize if the video looks really choppy in here. I know the performance for me is quite bad in here, but when I looked at the video for the last episode, it looked like it was actually choppier in the video. Significantly so. So, sorry about that. Shouldn't be that big of a deal, though. It's a fairly slow-moving game. So is that Vivian? Because this is the mansion. And uh, let's take a look at that original note. So Vivian Roberts, successful businesswoman and wife of an ex-mayor, was murdered outside her home. Oh, this is the mayor's mansion, but if this is the current mayor, and she was the wife of an ex-mayor, then perhaps this is not then again, it says the Roberts family, right? Yeah, and Vivian Roberts. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess that probably is Vivian. Oh, that must be, um, Trisha. I have that in my notes. Scott had a relationship with Trisha. They didn't say who Trisha was then, but I think they said that Scott was angry at Vivian around the mansion and wanted to be with Trisha or something like that, wanted to speak with Trisha, meet with her, and I'm, I'm guessing Vivian didn't want Scott to meet with her. So Trisha must be the daughter. Actually, I should probably add that here. Scott had a relationship with Trisha. Daughter of Robert's family? Almost certainly, I don't see why she would be in the picture if she wasn't. Dr. Henry Johnson found drowned in vehicle at bottom of Cherry Creek Lake. Body submerged in water for as long as 15 days. A Burgundy family car was found at the bottom of Cherry Creek Lake yesterday afternoon. A swimmer, who chose to be anonymous, said he was diving in the lake when he, say, when he saw what appeared to be a white car glittering at the bottom of the lake. He swam towards the car and was shocked to see a body in the driver's seat. He quickly called the police. Three hours later, the vehicle was pulled out of the lake and the body identified as Dr. Henry Johnson. Based on the police report, the body has been in the water between 10 and 15 days. Paints Creek Community Hospital confirmed that Dr. Johnson last checked in on June 28, 1995. The hospital staff assumed he might have left Paints Creek due to work-related reasons, which Dr. Johnson was known to do so. No missing person report was filed. There were so many killings and deaths. And missing people, there's the missing boy there's the incident 20 years ago there's vivian and this doctor oh this is very old october 16th 1973 dear miss roberts on behalf of jackson and lewis we would like to thank you for appointing us to be a paints creek community hospitals to be paints creek community hospitals medical provider with your husband, Mr. Charles Roberts, running for mayor, some might consider this partnership to benefit his status. On the contrary, it actually benefits us as your supported funds 
allow us to continue our research on assisting the elderly patients. Details of the contract will be sent over shortly. Please go through the details, have it signed, and return to us by the end of the week. Thank you. Yours sincerely, Eric W. Campbell. Hmm. So many drawers to open. Seems like everything is Clorex brand. Wait. Flower. Flower? Like, not F-L-O-U-R, like flower that you use to make bread, but flower like the kind you plant? What? I can't tell if that's a joke or a mistake or something else. They have two fridges. Rich assholes. Okay, so main room down here explored, yes? Oh no, haven't been back here. Keypad. I should make a note of that. And this one should be red, because it's a to-do, need to do it. I guess I don't need to put to-do in the title if it's red, huh? Find... was it four-digit? To keypad in mansion. It's five. Okay, I think that's everything in this room. Nope, never mind, not even close. God, this mansion's so huge, I love it. Oh my god, it's a whole nother wing to the mansion. Very bad luck finding stuff inside of drawers, but there's always that like 1% chance you'll find something, and when I do, it's gonna feel fantastic. Like, look at that. To-do list. Diary. Press R to read. Oh. 
I hope I didn't miss that on any other books, the press R to read thing. May 24th, 1993. I've been here for almost three months. Everyone treats me well. Most of the workers have been working here for a long time, some as long as 30 years. Dorothy is probably the oldest maid here. She's really nice and is responsible for taking care of all the maids. She's always giving me snacks. The other oldest worker is probably Bernard, the butler. He's so serious. I don't think I've ever seen him smile. June 2nd, 1993. Dorothy and Bernard don't talk much to each other. However, they are perfect when it comes to attending Charles and Vivian's needs. I guess that's why they are in charge here. I notice Charles and Vivian are never together much, even when they are both at home. They don't seem happy. What's going on? June 13th, same year. Vivian was passing by when I broke the vase. I must have been really nervous because I stood there for God knows how long. I thought she would scold me or even fire me. Instead, Vivian invited me to have tea with her. She asked about my parents and what I wanted to do in the future. I told her I hoped to open my own deli someday. She said I could do anything if I set my mind on it and work really hard. Like me, she used to be poor. Now she's a successful businesswoman. I hope to be like her someday. July 6th. Wanda is sick. I heard she has cancer. It's been two months since I took over her work. Her son Derek stays with her whenever he is not driving for Charles. I feel sorry for them. Luckily, Mr. Roberts helps with their financial needs. I pray she gets well soon. October 14th. Andrew shouted at me for walking on the grass even though I was sure I didn't step on it this time. He's always drunk anyways. Scott told me to ignore him. I'm not sure how he could be so patient, always taking care of Andrew and covering his workload. I would have assumed that Scott is Andrew's son if I had not known that Father Matthew adopted him years ago. He's so nice and talented, not to mention handsome. If only he wasn't taken. Okay, so Scott. Alright, so Scott is not the pastor's biological son. He's adopted. So let's note this. Let's, you know what, let's try something. Let's try a label. So let's try making a label for Scott. So I think I can tag anything that has to do with Scott. So can I add a tag? Add label, Scott. Okay, so that's under Scott. I'll put this one under Scott as well, so that way I can filter for like whose name, um, you know, filter the label for Scott's name and find any note that's relevant to Scott. So Scott is Andrew, the pastor. Z that's not grammatically correct, but whatever. Adopted son. And what else did it say? Scott told me to ignore him. So Andrew is always drunk and Scott covers his workload. Okay. Oh, you can also add labels by typing hashtag. Got it. Okay, so these are tagged with Scott, which means if we sort for Scott, we'll see only the notes relevant for Scott. Okay, that's cool, but how do I show all the other ones? <laughs> oh, you just click back up on notes. Label, and then notes. Okay. We're learning how to use Google Keep. To-do list, laundry duty today, clean out the attic, water the plants, book Mrs. Robert's appointment, wash the windows. Fascinating. I will take a picture of that. And then I will delete it, along with all these other useless pictures.
try to stay inside the house before I go outside, I think. Or maybe I'll do floor by floor. I'll do the entire inside bottom floor, and then I'll do the outside. And then I'll go upstairs. So I think that's everything except for this huge wing over here, right? Getting creepy. It's awfully dark. Ah, oh, much better. Is there a light switch here, too? It's still a creepy stairwell. Okay, so that door's locked. That goes upstairs. Let's check out the art room. Oh yeah, press R to read. Crap, I might have missed some of those other books then. Uh-oh. Curly handwriting. Sort of cursive. I don't know if I can read it. March 14th, 1993. We went hunting this afternoon. Scott's quite a fast learner and has good manners too. I told him to call me Charles, but he kept saying it's more appropriate to call me Mr. Roberts. He almost got the deer on his second try. If he keeps this up, I bet he can take something, something. I knew my daughter liked Scott. Okay, so yeah, Trisha is the daughter that and her and Scott were in a relationship. He's a good, <laughs> I first read that he's a good cooking young man. He's a good looking young man, respectful to others. I don't mind his status. There's nothing wrong with being an orphan. If there is, it's the parents fault. I know that Trisha fancies him. I've grown to like him, too. Yeah, this is supposed to be set somewhere in America, but between fancies him and that red phone booth, this is, like, definitely somewhere in the UK. August 27th. Today's mom's death anniversary. It's been 18 years since she passed away. I paid respect at her tombstone. Vivian wasn't feeling well and did not come, so I asked Scott to accompany me. He bought fresh lilies. He said lilies suggest that the soul of the deceased has something to a peaceful return to his peaceful state. Sometimes I feel he's like a son to me. Now that I think about it, Vivian is always getting sick during this time of the year. September 8th. I knew our relationship will not be as close as it used to. Ever since Vivian found out about my affair, she hasn't been the same. She once joked to her friends during dinner that all politicians are alike. And as a politician's wife, she has learned to close one eye. Sometimes I feel sorry for her. Sorry to her? I think it's because of Trisha that she didn't leave me. She's a good wife and a good mother. I'm grateful for that. A murderer and, of course, a politician that had an affair... Of course. Don't think any of the art's gonna help me. Okay, let's go up the creepy stairs. Oh wait, that's the upper floor. Am I going upstairs then? Yeah, I guess I'm already here. Shifts. Bernard, Charles, Vivian, Charles, Trisha. Ah, Bernard. No idea what it's to, though. 
gonna have to try it on every locked door in the mansion. I guess there's not that many locked doors. Nope. I wish I just used the key automatically and I didn't have to go into my inventory. I forgot to return the servant's room key in time, so I left... So I left the... in the kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen drawer, sorry about that. Didn't I look in all the kitchen drawers? Well, it implies it's not this key, right? Nope. Kitchen drawer key. Da Vinci Wine Service. If it's not Da Vinci's, it's not the best. <laughs> Invoice. $150 a bottle. Christ, so much wine. Why so much wine? I mean, I guess they're rich, so whatever. I guess that's the only justification you need for excess. I know Andrew was apparently a drunkard, but Andrew doesn't live here. I'm sorry, Thomas. I must have forgot to check inventory. Apparently we are missing a case of Da Vinci's. Please don't tell Ms. Roberts. Twenty years later, Paints Creek still honors the lives of coal miner, coal mine workers. Oh, so that's the incident. Twenty years ago, six members of this village perished in one of the coal mine demolition program, together with 13 others from the towns of Hillsdale and Old Creek. The coal mine belonged to the Roberts Mining Company. Vivian Roberts, who had just married into the Roberts family, started a fundraising event that raised 96000 Contributing 24000 from her own company, a total of 120000 was compensated to the six families. This is a very small sum compared to what those families lost, and no amount of money can replace their loved ones, Vivian told the press. What we can do, however, is provide them with whatever help they may need, and for those who has... And for those who has... There's a lot of spelling mistakes in the text. For those who has... Have helped financially, the Roberts family thank you. The words not only comforted those families, and that's the end of it. So that was back in 73. Because this is in 1993 and it's 20 years ago. So 73 is when the incident happened at the coal mine. A sheet to count scores. Yep, just another stair that goes up. Oh. 
security room. Another password. Oh, this one's a six-digit password. Okay. Six-digit passcode for keypad at security room. Second floor mansion. One, two, three, four, five, six. I wonder if you can unlock every single locked door in this game. I doubt it. I can't remember if I tried this door. Ah, oh, I really wish it used it automatically. <laughs> Same as the other to-do list. It keeps saying clean out the attic, by the way, which I guess is kind of a hint that there is an attic. So I need to find a way there. staircase up. For Vivian's tea schedule, tea time is 3.20 on the dot. Use flower pattern cup on Monday. <laughs> Cold line cups are for guests. Use half a cup of milk. Always leave sugar on the side. Never interrupt unless she calls you. That is very specific. I'm kind of paranoidly looking at numbers to see if I can find a passcode. I mean, I see 320, but none of the passcodes I need at the moment are three digits. Plus, I don't see why tea time would be the passcode. Is that everything upstairs? I think it is. That way, that way. So, which means... That means, how the heck do I get to the attic? It could be in one of the locked rooms, very possible, or perhaps there's... Uh, maybe it's one of those, like, pull-down things, you know? That's in the ceiling, and you need to look for it. Neither would surprise me. looking up. No, no, it's probably in one of the locked rooms. see any pull-down attic thing. Okay. Oh, 
I found this key upstairs, so I need to try it on any locked doors downstairs. Yes. Try to remember where the locked doors are. Oh, and I guess I'll look for the key in the kitchen. It's in a drawer in the kitchen. Oh, hey. I didn't see this before. Anyone delivering food to church on Saturdays, please lock all doors and return the key under the flower pot before leaving. Hmm. Delivering food to church. Okay, so the key to the church is under a flower pot at the church, right? I'm assuming they're talking about locking all doors at the church before you leave, rather than locking all the doors at the mansion? I'm not sure it could be either, to be honest. Okay, well I gotta look for a flower. <laughs> or maybe it's these flowers. I don't know, I can't do anything with them. Alright, I'm gonna look real close for this key that's supposedly in the kitchen. Did I not open everything? Oh, did I not open these? Ah, oh, I didn't open these. Alright, well I know what that's to. Shopping list for Trisha's birthday, three packs of balloons, candles, new table sheets, baking powder, eggs, strawberries. I'm gonna go back upstairs and use the key, just in case I find, like, another key up there. Before I try all the downstairs ones on that one key. cleaning Mrs. Roberts' tea room when I stumbled across a pile of letters full of negative comments addressed to the mistress. Why on earth does she keep those letters? She, more than anybody, doesn't deserve to be attacked by these faceless cowards. People can't see the positive impact she has made on the community. It's not her fault that her business deals can't please everybody. Is that about the business deal with the medical place? February 3rd, 1995, I was cleaning the mansion attic today when I found Derek and Wanda's old stuff. I asked Derek about it, and he told me he used to live here with his mom, Wanda, until he was about six years old. We chatted for like an hour. I've never talked to him that much since I've been here. It felt quite nice talking with him. March 3rd. I met Bernard today. His left wrist was swollen pretty badly. When asked about what happened, he said he fell during rock climbing and twisted his left hand so he can't help with writing the Easter invitations this year. I told him he only needs his right hand for writing. He looked at me as if I was joking. How could I have known that he was left-handed? April 17th. Today, Dorothy asked me to help clean her house. I didn't know she has her own place. I thought she lived with the Roberts family in the nanny's room. She said she's not using the house for the past few months, but it needs to be taken care every now and then. She will be 60 this year. I think I should help her. The, P.S. The address is 40 Black 
Pine Road, Paines Creek. Nevada. That is Nevada, right? Envy. Hold on. Okay, so, yeah, Dorothy lives at 40 Black Pine Road. Okay. We should note this. Dorothy, the servant, right? Lives at 40 Black Pine Road. Also, I should probably note before I forget that the key for the church, I think, is under a flower pot outside, question mark. May 29th, Trisha and Vivian had an argument during dinner. Vivian is thinking to send Trisha to a boarding school, but Trisha wants to be with Scott. She's not thinking straight. Hmm. So maybe that's why Vivian was trying to push away Scott. She was thinking that Scott was getting in the way of Trisha's future, I guess. Huh. I mean, that certainly would be a motive for Scott to kill Vivian. But, you know, he was like the biggest suspect based on the documents I found in the newspaper brought in for questioning and all that. So if he's the biggest suspect, I mean, this is a murder mystery. There's no way the biggest, most obvious suspect is the one who did it, right? June 1st, I was about to clean the gallery when I noticed the door slightly opened. I looked inside and saw Mr. Roberts standing in front of a painting. Ah, right before he left, I heard a faint click. As he was leaving the gallery, I hid in the staircase hallway. When I was sure that he's gone, I went into the gallery to see what he was looking at. It's just a painting of an old woman with a white headband. I wonder what's so interesting about this lady. That deserves a note. Should this be a to-do? I guess so. Look at painting in mansion uh, with a woman with a white headband. Don't know why I bothered to correct that. Who cares? June 11th. Uh, there will be a grand party to celebrate Trisha's birthday this evening. She will officially be 21 years old. Trisha and Scott are meeting at the shed behind the mansion. They called it their secret hideout. I know Vivian doesn't want Trisha to be with Scott. Should I tell her about it? Hideout? Okay. July 16th. Dr. Johnson is dead. He was the head of Paines Creek Community Hospital as well as the Roberts family doctor. The police came and asked if Vivian would be willing to go down to the station for a second interview. I was nervous, but Vivian was very calm and accepted their request. She came back in the evening and said that everything was okay. She had nothing to do with Dr. Johnson's death. His death was purely an accident. I'm a little bit kind of paranoid that I missed some... Uh-oh. Whew, almost got stuck in the corner. I'm a little bit paranoid that I missed some good stuff in the other, probably, journals that I forgot to read. But I haven't explored too much, so I can always go back to, like, the hotel. Okay, so no keys. That was it, right? Okay, so let's go downstairs and try that one key that I still haven't found what it's for. I don't suppose the key could be for Dorothy's place. House number 40? Hmm. 
Oh, yeah, let's do the painting thing first, actually. So, old woman with the red or uh, white headband. Hmm. Is safe. I still need the code. Six digits. Another to do. Six digit code for safe behind painting in mansion. And we can get rid of this one now. Downstairs, locked rooms. Oh wait, it actually says this is a house entrance key. Okay, so it's not it. Yeah, it probably is for Dorothy's place, right? Okay, good. I can stop wasting my time. I wish I saw that before. <laughs> All right, in that case, let's check out back. That must be a locked room that I don't have access to, right? This one with a padlock? Yeah. Something's scribbled there, but it's so small. Any sort of a password that I can see to enter on the keypad? Nah, I don't see anything. Yeah, I should look in through all the windows, because they might take you to locked places. That's not locked. It's just a library. What's that? <gasps> That's room 201! For the hotel! What the hell's that doing here? So this is another place I can't get into. It's got two doors. Both locked? I mean, it must be. Yeah, it's this entrance here, right? Yeah. Also, that lamp's fallen down, almost like there was a struggle or something, and then that key was dropped because of the struggle. Someone's bedroom. Okay, let's make a note. Um, hotel room key 201 is in a locked room in the mansion. Has, uh, what's his name? Not Scott, Steve? Scott, Stephen, yeah, Stephen. Has Stephen Moss been here? I wasn't sure if I was going to write much in my note-keeping stuff, but man, there's a lot to write about. 
it's getting pretty busy already. This was the secret meeting place of Scott and Trisha. Oh, of course it has a password. Oh. So many passwords I need. I see a key in there. I think, oh, I think two keys actually. There's a key there, and then there's a key there. And a book and some other things. Wait a minute, it's already got some numbers entered? Hmm. Does that mean anything? Well, let me make a note of it. Four digit password to enter. Um, what is this garage or shack? I don't know. Shack at back of mansion. I wonder if I'm just supposed to go up or down one or something. I don't know. Is that the missing case of wine? What the hell's it doing out here? from the inside. So it's impossible to unlock then. So, yeah, that means the only way to enter it is from up there. Which, I already know, is another locked door. I really do feel like... Whoa. Cool. Can I parkour my way up? I really do feel like there's probably like a password I can see through one of the windows, because there's so many passcodes. You know, if I can look into a locked room. I don't know. So is there a flower pot out here? Because I'm pretty sure the flower key thing is at the church. But just checking. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Okay. So I think we have two leads at this point. We can't do anything more at the mansion, it seems like. But I believe we have the key to get into Dorothy's place. Place number 40 at... Looking at my notes. 40 at what street? Uh, Black Pine Road. So we have that key. And I think we know how to get inside of the church as well. I think I'm kind of close to the church, so perhaps I'll go there first. That's ah, so nice back to be back in good performance land. Um... 
church is this way. Should keep an eye out for Black Pine Road as well. Walnut. Silver Lake. Yeah, church is up here on the left, I think. Clover Street. Here we go. Okay, up. Oh. Hmm. Flower pot. Dastardly key. There's so many. Look like very strange flower pots, by the way. <gasps> there it. Oh, of course, it's shaped like a cross. How cheesy! I thought it'd be underneath the flower pot, not just literally sitting on top of it. It's a very bad job hiding it. Oh, I can't use it. I guess it's for the main entrance. Okay, well, I think I'll save the exploration of the church for the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.